Hey guys, what's going on? This is Dustin from Summit Wash Pros here in Kansas City, Missouri, your moderator on Power Wash Bros. Today I'd like to give you a trailer tour of my pressure washing trailer. It is a 14 foot by 76 inch trailer with dual uh, 7,000 pound axles, so 14K rating with 10 ply tires. The whole height of the trailer is six feet, eight inches, so it allows me to work in seven foot parking garages, just barely, but it does. Um, and I'd just like to give you a tour of the rig. I, I built it uh, in about a month uh, in my spare time, but this is my main rig that I'll be washing around Kansas City with. So just to go into the rig, I'll start from the front and work my way back and I'll kind of explain everything on the rig as I go with tips and tricks and nuggets. So we'll start here at the tongue. Safety is the most important. So you have two great eight chains here uh, that are properly lengthed and you always cross your chains and you always put the hook underneath. Pair that with a locking coupler, an adjustable coupler, and it has a breakaway kit, the cable, and a side mount trailer jack so that I can store it away. And I'm allowed to have a toolbox here because there's no center jack. So the toolbox is from Tractor Supply. This allows me to store all of my chemicals and extra tools. So going through here, um, one thing you need to have for DLT is your SDS sheets. So I have a whole binder full of SDS sheets. You can also have an app that does that. Don't forget your triangles and your side of the road safety equipment. Um, these are slim containers that I got from US Plastics. Shout out to uh, Heath for uh, letting me know about these space savers, they're awesome. But make sure if you're gonna do this for DOT reasons, you transfer the label over because you gotta have the containers labeled with the product that's in them. So make sure you guys do that. But I have everything from Oilzilla here to uh, world's best graffiti remover all the way to F9 Double Eagle. These containers are about a gallon and a half. Uh, so they, they store a gallon easy and they, they save a ton of space. Here I have a toolbox. It just has some extra fittings and uh, hose bars in them. See if I can get this back with one arm. All right, I got an uh, extra uh, whip line here, half inch with half inch quick connects. And what I like to do for my threads is I like to use monster blue tape with monster dope. I do three rounds of tape, a little bit of dope, just a thin line around it. And then you go ahead and wrench tight everything, wipe the dope away, and it creates a solid seal that won't leak for a long time. All right, and then I have a, me oh, a metering wheel here that I can measure uh, the ground with if it's a weird angle or Google Maps doesn't show it. Google Earth, I mean. And then on your pump-up sprayers, the thing that always breaks the most is the nozzle. So keep some extra nozzles on. All right, so in the front of the trailer here, we have the main machine. It's a Hydromax unit. I have two Hydromax units. They are 10 gallon a minute, 3,500 PSI units. They're powered by a Honda IGX 800. These all, everything on this rig is brand new guys. And the pump here is a, uh, I believe it's a, a TSF 2421. It's a 10 gallon a minute, 3,500 PSI pump. My pump is dual fed. I have an inlet here. And if I go over, you'll see the other inlet right there. I dual feed my pumps. I don't want to restrict any flow to my pumps. I want the most flow I can possible. That is the goal with this rig. Everything with this rig is for the most amount of flow possible uh, to the tip of the gun. And I'll explain more about it as I go. So I have one unit here and I have a second unit here. Um, I can work between these units. I actually can sit down inside of there and I can work on my, my pumps and my machine and it's all great. As we move along, oh, by the way, for the machine as well, it has a trap pressure unloader because I tie both my machines together in a Siamese setup so I can get 20 gallons a minute, probably 18 to 20. But I've also redirected the exhaust here to go up and over so that it doesn't burn any of my hoses or reels. Okay, moving here, I have my uh, bleach transfer pump. It's the Delavan seven gallon a minute pump. Uh, the setup on this is on the inlet I have a three-fourths hose. This is Tiger Flex hose. You can get it from Hose Warehouse or US Plastics. On the other end, I have a valve with a female cam lock. The reason I have that is because my draw stick has a male cam lock on it, so I can connect it there and I can draw my bleach from my tote. And on the other end, when I'm ready to rinse this pump out with water, because you always need to rinse your pump to make it last longer, I disconnect it. I go over here to my water tank 
and I go ahead and connect my other cam lock here so that I can rinse my pump with fresh water when I'm done. Now, on the outlet, I have a three-way valve. You can get this valve from US Plastics. It's a great valve. It's a small profile. Um, this one goes to the tank and fills the tank. So when I'm rinsing with water, I obviously don't want to put water in my SH tank. So the valve is in the down position. I have a hose here and I can pour that on the ground so I can rinse my pump out. It's not going in my tank. And when I'm done with it, I leave it in the down position that traps the bleach in this line. And this whole line here is rinsed out with fresh water. So that's good to go for next time. And one tip that I like to do when I'm mounting these is I don't use the rubbers. I take that off. I go to the store, I get some spacers, some plastic spacers, and that's what I use. It's much more secure. It doesn't shake, it doesn't break. Uh, I highly suggest doing that. Moving over, I have a small vise from Harbor Freight. It's only like 50 bucks. I highly suggest getting a vise. If you have a, I don't care if you have a truck, uh, a box truck, if you have a skid or you have a trailer set up, I don't care what you have, get a vise, get it in the trailer. This is a lifesaver. The guys are using two wrenches to tighten fittings. You're just not getting the best, uh, you know tightness on your on your threads this comes in handy for so many things i highly suggest getting one okay moving around we see we have some reels here okay i have a total of one two three four reels these are all electric hand a reels so i got these from sprayer depot uh this reel has 300 feet of fierce jet half inch hose and this one has 300 feet of fierce jet half inch hose one for each machine this reel here has 275 feet, I believe, of the Hydroflex Softjet 5.8 300 PSI hose. Uh, with the smooth outside, it makes it great for traveling. And then this hose, this monster hose reel, by the way, uh, this is Flexilla 3 fourths hose with a cam lock on the end because I use a hydrant meter for my water most of the time. So my hydrant meter here has a cam lock on it so I can easily connect it. And if you're wondering how to get a hydrometer, just contact your city's water company and see about renting a meter every day and paying the water on it. Um, for residential houses, I have a uh, male cam lock that I screw into their spigot and then I just connect this up. Uh, for the reels, this these two reels for the pressure are the SNC 18 Echoes, or 18 E's, sorry. For those guys that aren't military, they don't understand what Echo is. And then this reel for my soft wash is a E1530-1718. And this giant monster reel here, this is going to be a EP6030-2324RT. Okay. Now on my half inch fierce jet hose at the end, I have a ball valve. This is the DN15. The 15 is the half inch model. The DN10 is the 3 8 model. I have a, a full swivel here, full flow swivel, and half inch quick connects all around. Um, I'm also gonna show you or tell you a tip and trick that you can use to prevent rust on your fittings towards the uh, end of the video. Again, these are all electric reels, so if I pull this down and I hit this button, you can see it goes up. It's a time saver, it's an investment, and I think it's highly worth the investment. Moving towards here, at the end of my soft wash hose gun, I have the red trigger gun, okay? I, I love this gun, I think it works great. There's also another gun that Heath sells on his website. It's gray and orange, I highly suggest that one as well. Okay, uh, the inlets on these rails are half inch. This one is half inch as well. This one though is one inch. My water flow is one inch because you gotta understand guys, when you're washing, 90% of your time is put into rinsing. So I highly suggest investing in something that allows you to get the most possible flow in your machine and then also get the most rinsing power. Um, so moving over here though, you're probably wondering, what the heck is that? That looks pretty cool and shiny. Well, that is my Siamese kit. And the way I've built it is sometimes you have two people washing. So you have one machine and one reel for each person. Uh, but if it's just me and I have a large job, let's say I'm rinsing a parking lot and it's a lot of asphalt and there's dirt everywhere. It's a pain to rinse that asphalt. And if I don't have access to a, uh, like a hydrant's hose, if I don't have one or whatever, and I just need a lot of flow by turning this handle down, like it currently is the water routes through this, uh, hose, instead of going down to the rail, it routes up through the check valves on, and, uh, it combines with this rail that's already going through the check valve into the half inch T, into the unloader block and into the reel. 
Um, if I want to bypass the reel, I can. I just disconnect that, connect it to the uh, other quick connect on my hose here. And now I'm combining two 10 GPM machines to 20 GPM. The only way you can do a system like this is if you have two machines that are somewhat the same pressure and GPM, you have trap and loaders. I think I may have said that already, but trap and loaders, same GPM, same pressures, and you have two check valves uh, in the correct orientation. That's the only way you can safely connect the two and not destroy your machines. Um, and I do not run this all the time. It's only when I need the flow. Now, stopping at these Hydromax machines, I have uh, this here. Uh, basically what this is, is this is an extension of my old drain lines. So I basically have that here so I can drain the oil in each pump or each machine, and I can go ahead and do my old changes this way. Now what this is, is it's just between the two hoses, I've put a plastic piece here to separate it, and then I've taped it up and I've made it, I've made sure I've uh, secured it down. So that's what this is. This is for changing my oil. It's just an extension, that's all it is. All right, uh, moving up here, these are light bars, they're 24 inch light bars, I believe. And all the lighting in this trailer is mounted in the frame of the trailer. And the way I've able to do that is I've also utilized these poly boxes. They're metal two inch boxes that are waterproof. The wire goes in here and connects and goes through the trailer. And on the top of these, I've gone ahead and sealed the top there with sealant and it's already waterproof anyway, so it's watertight. Um, when it comes to other lighting as well, you can see that this right here is a light strip. It's a dual light strip. Sorry, let me get the camera to focus. And with the hole here, I've gone ahead and capped the hole with a one inch cap uh, with the top cut off, so it's real watertight. Okay. Moving along, I have a shirts box here. You guys may have heard of the Flow Pro machine. I like the shirts box. Uh, they do the same thing. It basically allows you to downstream, turn your soap on and off. But with the shirts box, uh, this allows you to, yes, keep the injector in the same line. But this one, uh, I had it on my last rig. I don't think he makes them anymore. But this is this, the bleach line. This right here is your water line. And this right here is the outlet line. So what happens is when it's off, I believe you're drawing uh, water through your injector the whole time. Your injector's in line, you're not bypassing it, you're, you're drawing water. Um, when it is on, you're drawing soap, and so it changes over, and now you're drawing soap. But the benefit of this is that if your downstream injectors go bad all the time, uh, they won't go bad all the time anymore because you're constantly rinsing the injector when you have this unit turned off so this is for the guys that downstream it's a great unit uh, i've had the flow pro before i like it too it's just the injectors don't last as long so if you are downstreaming i'm not downstreaming this is a backup system for me but if you are downstreaming give the stress box a try let me know how you like it you may lose a gallon of flow but i think it's worth it to, uh in my opinion uh going back to the reels here um one tip that I suggest is coating your bolts here with some type of uh, covering or coating. So I've used uh, electrical tape spray. It's, it's a coating that you can spray on there and it protects your bolts and stuff, but you can also use like a uh, underbody truck coating. I've sprayed that on before. It's just protect the uh, threads and everything there uh, so that they last long. And then of course the wire coverings right here to protect the wires from oxidation. Okay. Moving through, I'm sorry if I forget anything, guys. Moving through, you got a fire extinguisher here. Make sure you have this for DOT, but also your safety. These things catch fire sometimes. Electrical fires happen. So make sure you have a fire extinguisher that's rated for chemicals, rated for electrical fires, things like that. Okay, moving down to here. This is a uh, house filter, actually. It is a 40 gallon per minute house filter. And this is what I use to filter on my water in my rig. So when water goes, uh, through the meter through the hose and through the reel it comes through here basically what this is is imagine a pineapple with the outside cut off and the core cut out from the middle that's what it looks like inside in the shape and the filter is like a plastic kind of weaved uh fabric material and it lasts a very long time over a year it traps a ton of sediment it traps scaling it traps a lot of the uh, calcium and it really protects not only your equipment and but uh it leaves the water a little bit cleaner so that it doesn't spot as much on windows so this is an investment that i like and it's 40 gallon per minute rated you're not going to lose any flow so since we're talking about the water system that goes into my 425 gallon tank and the reason i got this tank is because 
it stays within my height limit of six feet, eight inches. So if you look on here, you can see I have a meter. That meter is, a, is for gas, you can get it on Amazon, but it allows me to see the flow rate that goes into the tank for gallons per minute. Uh, and it allows me to also check how many gallons have gone into this tank overall. And I can reset that function if I am resetting it for the day or for the month, just to see how much water I've gone through. It's, it's a good uh, amount of information. So I'm actually gonna jump up here so I can show you inside of the tank. So if I open this tank, first thing you're gonna notice is a job valve. This is a uh, full flow valve, it's one inch. I prefer these over the Hudson's. These are a side mount only job valve and they're easy to clean. You just twist it and it comes right off. I highly suggest these, they are more expensive but they give you way more flow. I promise guys, you're gonna notice the difference as soon as you, you hook it up. Inside the tank, I have my four bulkheads that two go to each pump. I have my three inch drain, my one inch bulkhead down there. I have SH, or uh, I'm sorry, PVC slotted filters for all my water. And then this line here is actually my bypass line for the AR45. It stays in this tank, it keeps it cool. The point of the bypass system is like a radiator for your AR45. So I went ahead and put it in here but it also acts as a safety net because I've put it through bulkheads so that in case this valve ever goes bad or it fails on me, uh, this is not sealed. So water can simply leak out of here and not basically explode my tank. Okay. These are the uh, outlets from my unloaders for each machine. They go right in here and they go into the tank. I do not put a... Uh, a pipe down to stop cavitation. It doesn't really cause any. I, it simply hits the side of the tank and it just drips down. And sorry about this focusing guys, I can't control it. iPhone just auto focuses. Oh, and one last thing. There's a fish light down there that makes the tank glow blue at night. It's really good for attracting customers' attentions at night. So one thing I also wanna mention is I've put my line straight through bulkheads. You can also do uni seals for these. I prefer bulkheads. It's just a personal uh, preference. Okay, so moving through, you can see my line here. This is also good for filling buckets of water. So I can open this up here and I can fill buckets of water as needed. It provides a ton of flow. It's really great. Okay, but it's also again, like I said, to rinse my 12 volt pump line for when I transfer bleach. This is here as a hydrometer. Gotta have one, guys. Um, tap in a fire hydrant when you need to. I can use this anywhere in my city. Um, not outside city limits, just in my city. So I have that. I have two metal gas cans and a diesel can. Highly recommend. Uh, five gallons per can. They last a long time. They're not cheap and they don't just, uh, they're not cheap in plastic. This is my bleach tank here. Um, it's a 100 gallon slimline tank that is mounted securely with the metal uh, brackets that come with it or you can order it separately. This line is for my AR45. This line is the inlet line for my bleach. And this is for the uh, shirts box. Okay, now moving towards the side here, we're starting to get into my AR45 soft wash system. Uh, the system is kind of complex, not really. I've, I've tailored it towards my needs. I've had an AR45 before and I've gotten it again just because I love the unit so much. Um, so first we're going to the proportioner system since it's right in front of us. This is from Texas Pressure Washing Store. His team does a great job in making these. Um, I've added a customization to mine, which I'll go into shortly. Um, the one thing I really like about this unit is that in case you lose the remote, you always have this on switch. So you can you know, do the machine on and turn the machine off so that you can still get your water and bleach when you need it. Because I've lost my remote before and I know it's a pain in the butt when you don't have a remote and don't have batteries or something to replace your remotes and you're kind of stuck. So highly recommend this simply because it's built well, but also huge safety feature. Um, so going over here to the manifold, uh, this is a four inlet manifold, but one of them's blocked off. Now I actually like that it's blocked off because it gives me space here to do some custom uh, installation. So this is water, this is soap, this is my uh, bleach slash water. Now when there's times where I've found I need to buy a bunch of degreaser and typically I get a drop stick right and I, I try to siphon it up. Um, all these chemicals here are fully concentrated and I've realized that I can just kind of delete these through the uh, soap valve here. 
So this is a custom manifold I've made. And what it is, is uh, you have your drop stick, your water, your degreaser, your soap, and your acid. So when all these valves are off, it is drawing water through the soap system. Okay, when I wanna draw my degreaser, let's say, all I gotta do is turn this knob like this. Now I'm drawing degreaser through my soap valve. If I wanna draw a regular soap for roof washes, let's say, I turn that off and I turn this one on. There we go. This valve is for my soap. Same thing for here. If I need to do an acid wash on a bunch of concrete to brighten it, that's what this is for. I simply turn this one and I'll have acid going through. Now, you really don't wanna mix acids into greasers. So what you do is if you're going from an acid to a greaser, to greaser to acid or whatever, you turn all the valves off first, you open the, you turn it to water flush and you go ahead and let that rinse all of it. This rinses all three valves. So you never have to worry about mixing chemicals, okay? But also let's say you need a custom mix. I can turn this valve to a drop stick and I have a drop stick right here that I will simply put in a five gallon bucket right there on the floor. That's what that is for. This is how the back looks. Now this is an experiment completely. It's not 100% effective, it's not patented. There's gonna be problems with it. This is my first ever test of this. So we're just seeing how it goes, but um, it works really well. Now, if you're wondering, man, his one fourth line looks so different than mine. Well, that's because this is a metal braided line, poly line that does not collapse, non-collapsible suction line. You can get this also from US Plastics. You're welcome. It's from Curitech, by the way. My soap tanks and acid tanks are seven gallon tanks. One's full of degreaser. I prefer EBC for my general broad degreaser. This soap is a mix of slow-mo. I love the soap. You can dilute it a ton and it's still super soapy. And then my acid, I chose uh, Groundskeeper. I think it's great for brightening concrete. Okay, so that's this system. All my hoses are uh, one inch besides this. Uh, that goes to my AR pump. It's one and a quarter. Okay, now going to the AR45 pump. I have it on a Honda IGX, or a, I'm sorry, a Honda GX600. 160, I'm sorry guys, Honda GX 160 motor, AR45 pump, 11 gallons a minute. Um, this motor I've converted to electric start. It's really easy guys. They sell like a $60, $80 kit on Amazon uh, and it takes maybe an hour. You gotta have general maintenance, uh, mechanical like, I guess, uh, education. It's just a couple bolts, you take it off, you insert their wheel in there, you close it all up, you run the wires and that's it. So it's really easy to install. I highly recommend it. Now, on the uh, pump here, I've done some modifications based on my experience. So I'm not a fan of hose barbs anymore. I suggest you go ahead and thread this out. You can go ahead and, and uh, connect this, remove that valve if you want to. I've removed it. I don't use it. Um, and I have a threaded 300 PSI uh Bluebird premium rubber air hose that's three fourths 300 psi that is also threaded into my reel here okay now also what i've noticed is right here you can see that i have mcdonald's triangles what i realized here guys is that these like to slip out sometimes with vibration so i went ahead and bent the uh the u uh insert to a mcdonald's sign and i, I put a wire around it these will not come out anymore. That's one way to keep these in it. Cause in case you've ever had these pop out, blow off, you lose everything, it's just not fun. So that's what I've done with my Air 45 system, okay? Moving to the back of the trailer. I'm sorry it keeps getting blurry guys, I can't control that. Uh, moving to the back of the trailer, I have a couple boxes for storage. This one is my toolbox. It's a slim box, I think it's wonderful. It gives you a bunch of drawers. This drawer has a couple of uh, injectors. It has a dual lance turbo nozzle injector that I made. I'm not gonna use this, maybe as a backup. The reason why is here's my turbos for the 10 GPM machines, but also here's a 20 gallon, or I believe an 18 gallon a minute turbo that I got from giantpumps.com. Thanks guys. One tip I wanna tell you is on your plastic fittings, on your nylon or your poly fittings, you can use this right here. This is Oatly's Rain or Shine Medium Blue PVC Cement. You can use this instead of Blue Monster Taper Dope. You can just use this, put it around, nice thick glob, tighten it up real quick because it dries somewhat fast. 
wipe away the excess, and you will have a wonderful seal on your threads. That is not permanent, but it's also great for water resistance. And it's, uh, it's good up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 through 110. Okay, the next drawer is uh, gloves. Make sure you have gloves. The next drawer right here is uh, some tools that I have. So again, I like the Blue Monster Tape brand. One thing I want to tell you guys, this is a secret. Secret alert, WD-40 corrosion inhibitor. These, this WD-40 spray is what I prefer for all my nuts and bolts for wiping down all of my fittings. It prevents rust. It's a beautiful coating. You can see here on all of my uh, bolts, I have sprayed a little bit of this stuff. It coats and protects from rust. I sprayed on all of my metal fittings, okay? I sprayed it on the back of, of everything. You can see right there. It protects it and it could, and you know, when you have bleach fumes in air guys, the stuff rusts so much faster. So make sure you're protecting your stuff, okay? And then I just have a couple of miscellaneous tools um, in here. I also have a dental kit that you use to get our rings out. Okay, that's what that drawer is. This drawer is just for extra remotes for the uh, shirts box and the AR45 proportioner system. And then up here is just some extra uh, uh, tips, but also a wire here. Guys, when you're up on a lift, like an articulating lift, you wanna make sure you uh, go ahead and secure your gun. It's really important that you secure a gun to you. So one end goes on the gun, the other end it connects to the uh, lift so that in case you drop your gun, one, you don't have to go all the way down there and get it, but two, it's for safety. I believe OSHA requires that anything loose like that be secured, so that's what you have that for. All my boxes on this rig are lockable, and that's a QR code, so people behind me can check me out. Make sure you have some rags. Here is a buyer's box. This is my electric box, strictly electric box only. It's a waterproof box. I have a couple people that I like to advertise because they're great companies. Uh, this whole system is chargeable right here. You just plug it in once a week. That's all you got to do um, overnight, and then it's good for another week. It's that great. On the side here, I have some switches. These are waterproof switches you can get from Amazon, but these control all the lights on the rig, and they also light up when you, when you turn them on. I also have a, a meter here so I can see what the uh, voltage, voltage is of my batteries. And I also have this switch here that glows when you press it. That is for my 12 volt pumps when I'm transferring bleach. These switches control all the lights on the rig. This first switch controls my lights that go underneath here. You see that right there? These four lights control my floods. So you can see here, it controls my flood lights. Now these are very, very bright at night, super bright. Uh, one for each side because I don't wanna blind neighbors. I just need to light up the one area I'm working. And then this switch at the end lights up my tank at night. Uh, so this is the buyer's box. So the electric box here, you open it up, you have uh, two uh, Super Start Marine 12 volt deep cycle batteries that are wired in parallel. There's also a GPS tracker system on it. I have my remotes here off the floor that are mounted with Velcro. So you can easily take it, do your work, put it back when you're done. Make sure you have some eyewash solution for your safety. It's easy to secure the battery, guys. Just get some L brackets and just butt it up against it. The whole charging system is a Pro Mariner Pro Sport HD12 bank battery charger. It charges both batteries and conditions batteries. This is an extra light that I have. It, it hooks to metal and you can uh, turn it on. It's very convenient when you're doing work and has three brights in this setting. So I like to have this light. Um, this is a master switch for the whole rig. So basically if this is turned off and the box is locked, you can't even turn on the AR45. You can't turn on anything. It's a master switch. Here is my manifold here for my electrical. I have uh, some negative and positive bus bars. I have my self-resetting breakers for my reels in my pump. And then th it looks kind of like a mess, and it kind of is, but then here's for the switches. So that is how that's set up my electrical box. Okay, moving around to the side. I have my 48-inch, 49-inch Mondo. It's a four-foot surface cleaner. Um, 
I love the surface cleaner, guys. It's great. And what powers this is when I sign these two washers, so 20 gallons a minute on this. And it has currently in there 2504 tips. Okay, that's what it has. This is also a lockable system. Um, so I can go ahead and lock it and secure it so that it doesn't fall. It's not going to fall out, but no one's going to steal it either. Over here, I have the Whistler Wash Classic. You're not going to find these anywhere else, guys. This is a one-of-a-kind Whistler Wash Classic. They won't make these for you. Don't ask. It is one at a contest from Whistler Wash, and I was a blessed winner that day. This is also secured right here with an extra long master lock. If you want to know how to mount your surface cleaner, guys, it's easy. Get a post and put a U-channel in and drill a hole straight through. That's as easy as it is, and you just hang your surface cleaner there. Now, I've actually modified uh, both my surface cleaners. So you can see that this is the bar for that surface cleaner. For the Mondo, these are half inch fittings that go into a half inch T and then, and then they scale down to three fourths hose, or I'm sorry, three eighths hose, okay? Um, for both of my handlebars, I've replaced the hose. So you can see this is all half inch hose but it also goes to half inch fittings. I don't need a handle, I have a ball valve as my on and off. So this is half inch fittings all right here. If the hose busts, I can disconnect my hose, replace the hose, connect it back. My surface cleaner is operational again. Okay, same thing goes for my Mondo hose. Let me get that out of there, okay? And that actually is a 40 gallon per minute or 25 to 35 gallon per minute filter on there on the Mondo, all right? Let's see, moving along, on this side of the truck and the rig, you have your gas. So it's one side fill up that, um, and easy to work on. All the wires are ran through the frame, like I said, but also underneath the entire rig too. So it's a very compact build. Going over here, I wanna show you my trigger guns real quick. These are the best guns and I suggest using them. Uh, the ST2315, it stands for Stuntner, so ST2315. These are 12 gallon a minute rated, 5,000 PSI. This trigger gun here, I believe is 20 to 30 gallons per minute, maybe even 50, uh, but it's the ST3500. I can't remember at this time, so don't quote me, but this has half inch internals. This is for when I'm running 20 gallons a minute. Everything from the outlet of my washer, through all my reels and fittings, all the way to the tip of the of the uh, fitting is half inch, no flow restrictions. Um, all my lances have a disconnect for the lance because there's times where you're cleaning, let's say the railing of a deck and it's just awkward to have a long lance and be up like this and to spray a deck uh, railings. So take it off, quick connect to your quarter inch connection here. You just, you have a uh, half inch to a quarter inch and you connect it in. And now you can use your tip here and you can clean the railings without having to break your back. The way this is secured is really simple. It is two garage hooks that you can get from any hardware store, uh, rubber mount coated, and one's on each side. It holds it here. And these are locked in place with a bike lock. AKA it's not gonna stop anybody from stealing it, but it'll hopefully slow them down and deter them from wanting to take it. And in case you're wondering, that's not secure. It's not going anywhere, guys. It won't go anywhere at all. It's impossible, unless I, unless this breaks or rips, which it's not, okay? Um, these are half inch uh, aluminum uh, lances, and you have a handle here so that you can put it where you need to because you're dealing with high pressure sometimes. So that's what that's for. I have two four foot lances, and I have a six foot lance. The reason I have an extra long six foot lance is because sometimes I don't wanna be super close to the wall when I'm turboing it or something because of the splashback. Maybe you need more reach or more height. So that's what that's for. Okay. Uh, now the flooring on this is called G flooring. It's a chemical resistant flooring. I mean, rust literally just wipes away. Okay, super highly chemical resistant. I prefer this over painting the wood decks. I just think it lasts much longer. It's easier to clean and maintain. You're not gonna get any paint chipping or chemicals that are reacting with the paint material. It's not as messy at all. You lay it down, you make sure it expands with some warmth, you cut it to shape, you bolt it down, you screw it down, and it's that's it. So, all right guys, I hope I explained everything on this rig. 
if you want to guess how much this rig costs, comment below. If you have any questions about the rig build or any questions about washing in general, maintenance in general, tips and tricks in general, uh, let me know. Okay. Again, this is Dustin from Summit Wash Pros here in Kansas City, Missouri, your moderator on Power Wash Pros. And I just want to tell you again, I'm sorry if the video got blurry here and there. It's an iPhone and it does that. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. It's been a pleasure to build this and keep you all a part of my community. And I hope to see you guys out there. All right. You guys take care.